Hi, welcome back to the Genealogy Gems YouTube channel. I'm Lisa Louise Cook of the Genealogy Gems podcast, and joining me today here at Roots Tech 2013 is Jay Jordan. He's the president and CEO of OCLC. Welcome to the show, Jay. Thank you very much, Lisa. Thanks for having me. Now, I was going to say the full name, but you said, no, most people will know this by OCLC, but right. tell us what the full name is of the company. Uh, Online Computer Library Center. Right. That's what the OCLC stands for. Now, the name I always think about is WorldCat and yes. WorldCat.org. Right. What's the relationship between OCLC and WorldCat? Well, World, WorldCat is really kind of the, the center of everything we do there. Uh, it was the founding principle of OCLC to build this shared resource for libraries when it was founded. Uh, WorldCat was actually turned on as a database in 1971. Wow. So it, it contains now uh, you know, almost two billion holdings from libraries in, in, uh, around the world. So we operate in 170 countries and there's about 70,000 libraries that, that do some form of cataloging or resource sharing or interact with OCLC. Exactly. And, you know, I know a lot of you who have listened to the show or uh, even in my book, How to Find Your Family History in Newspapers, I do a whole section on WorldCat because it is such an incredible resource. And it's not just public libraries. We're talking corporate libraries, universities. It really broadens the reach of where we might look for resources. Yeah. I think... Uh, and beyond that, and so it's got many, many university libraries around the world, but increasingly we have national library collections. Oh, uh, and we have something called Archive Grid, which is 5,000 archives representing 2 million collections in Archive Grid. So there really is a lot more to mine there uh, than just uh, what you would think of as a book collection in a public library, yes. The world's largest card catalog, right? Yeah, that's right. Now, some, I'm sure many of those collections come to you because you're working together with international partnerships. This indeed. is a, a global card catalog, if you will, is it not? It, it is, indeed. It's, and yeah. has that always been the focus, or did you start focusing here in the U.S. and well, move your way out? Well, yeah. It, the founder was hired to, to create a, a, a more useful model in Ohio, initially, just in, in uh, 54 colleges and universities there. Then it turned out to be a pretty good idea. So the folks over in Pennsylvania said, hey, can we get in on this, and so on. So it, it kind of moved out from the, its founding birthplace in Ohio. Uh, and increasingly, we've really pushed hard to make sure that those great international collections are represented in it. So increasingly, it's become a global resource. And we have lots of more work to do ahead of us, too. Incredible. And the reason that I really wanted to snag Jay and have him meet with me here and talk with you is because they've got something really exciting going in terms of partnerships with FamilySearch. And of course, FamilySearch is sponsoring Roots Tech, which is bigger and better than ever. Were you here last year? No, I wasn't. This is my <laughs> first one. They moved everything around, so we're all still looking for the doors. Yeah. But who wants to leave, right? Um, but Jay, tell us about the partnership with the Family History Library specifically and their catalog. Well, we're we're very excited. I, I think on both sides. We I all think are. I can well I think I can speak for family search on yeah. this one too. Uh, we've talked about it for quite some time. Uh, it's a very logical relationship. Uh, we're both, you know, in, information organizations interested in providing much lowering the barriers of access to information. Right. Uh, specifically uh, that which is housed in libraries or that which has to do with family history. So I think the symbiosis that, that can be achieved with this relationship is we haven't even imagined how exciting this can be. So libraries will drive traffic to, you know, a, a, a serendipitous discovery of somebody using a library will drive traffic to family search and all of their assets. And by the same token, somebody in family search will be linked into WorldCat into libraries. So it might say, gee, were you aware that that particular object is available to you at your public library, which is exactly two blocks away from your house. That is one of the coolest features of WorldCat. I love that it reorganizes the listings geographically, so you know, even though you might be looking for something across the country, it turns out it's at the university down the road, right. and, and you've got access yeah. to it. Now, Family History Library, in, is that my understanding is traditionally they have not done interlibrary loan with public libraries. And so, uh, some, I think they have a few special a few partnerships, special but 
So when we find something on WorldCat yeah. and it says, hey, this is something that's with the Family History Library, this is then, I guess, just pointing them to exactly. how you would access it, even exactly. if it isn't through an interlibrary yes. loan. Well, and you know, the Family History Centers, there's you know almost 5,000 Family History Centers around the world. Right. So part of my imagination says, not only is there a public library down the street, but if you're really interested in pursuing serious genealogical research, how about there's a you know, family history center yes. in the next town over. It was interesting. Someone stopped by our stand today and said, well, I don't get the WorldCat thing and what it does for me. And I said, well, you know, let, you're doing research. And he says, yeah, I get that. But what if the only copy's in Denmark? Mm -hmm. What good does that do me in Utah? I said, well, that's an interesting question. I said, number one, I said, at least you know it exists. Yes. That's, you know, a big net gain there. And you may choose to vacation in Copenhagen so you can access some register that's of interest to your research. I said, more, more importantly, increasingly libraries and the family uh, search and everybody else are starting to collaborate. So if it's out of copyright, that library may be kind enough to scan the document and email it to your public library or the Family History Center. Exactly. So I said, don't give up just because it's in Denmark. Well, I love it, too, because... Um, we can do a little more homework before, occasionally we need to engage the services of a professional genealogist who might be in Denmark, mm -hmm. but how nice to know when you're doing that, I've already targeted some things that I'd like you to be able to, exactly. to pursue for me, yep. and what else is there. It really broadens our scope of what's available. Right. How did it all start? Did you go to them? Did they go to you? Uh, How did you know there was going to be that's a, a good question? I think connection. they I think they actually pinged us first. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll give them all the credit. Uh, but you know they 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 just thought about this. They knew uh, WorldCat was you know the most used database in higher education year right. over year over right. year. So they're like, wait a minute, there's huge assets in these libraries. Um, you know why don't we strike up a relationship? So we started these conversations some time ago. Uh, and you know, got comfortable with each other and so on, and then figured out exactly what the construct might look like. And then, of course, we got the lawyers involved. <laughs> but we have actually got and the still documents. Made it. It's still going to happen. Still made it. <laughs> <laughs> so everybody worked very hard on the agreement. So. Well, and one of the advantages they have, thinking of it from the terms of genealogy, is they're going to have a lot of surnames associated with mm -hmm. materials. WorldCat doesn't necessarily come from that perspective, but. What I thought would be kind of fun is, you know, you do your, your general WorldCat search, and while it says Family History Library, there's a couple of other libraries. Am I correct in thinking that maybe the Family History Library listing might give me a little more to work with to make that decision whether going to my local library to get the book I is worthwhile? I think oftentimes that will be the case. Yeah. But interestingly, there's, there's a lot more names in WorldCat than you might imagine. Really? Okay. Yes. Yeah, so we have a bunch, we won't go into the details today, but there's there's something called WorldCat Identities, which are machine derived. So these wonderfully standard mark records that librarians have put in for all these years, we've been data mining them with, with algorithms and have created upward of 25 million unique identity pages. Wow. So yes, Albert Einstein has one, so does Sherlock okay. Holmes. So, so they're really subjects, not real right, people. Right. But there's a lot of proper names and surnames in there. There's another service we have called the Virtual International Authority File, where we have these the uh, authoritative person name authority files from uh -huh. places like the National Library of France um, uh -huh. and, and 22 other agencies, the Library of Congress, National Library of France, National Library of Germany. So we have a huge store of names so that they can be disambiguated. So I think that will work both ways. I, I think most of this relationship will be symbiotic, so mm -hmm. benefits will accrue going both ways. So now everybody out there who's watching is thinking, when is this happening? When <laughs> do I get to see the merger yeah. when I do my search? Well, now the work begins, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so you get, all, get through the process stuff and get the documents. So that's why one of the reasons we're here. Uh, and I really have, I'm blown away by the size of this thing, the third year, and we've got yeah. 6,700 yeah. people. And, 2,000 young people coming in on Saturday. So uh, I, we're doing that just now to say, okay, what would give the greatest lift to both parties, but mostly to anybody interested in genealogical research, what would give the greatest lift the fastest? We have to get the data piece right. You right. Know, data quality is what it's all about, obviously. So we don't want broken links, we don't want dead ends. So we've really got to figure that out first. 
And then I think there's all kinds of adjunct benefits that we can bring to bear, uh, both from Family Search and from OCLC. Is it going to be kind of a uh, bring it out in waves? Is it going to be yeah. one big launch, do you think? No, well, I, I think it, we're going to have to do it sequentially. Yeah. So I think the data piece we should probably try to bring out. You know, we need critical mass of data, so we don't want to dribble that out. So I think we'll get the data piece done and, you know, make a, a, a big launch with that. And then as we figure out these ancillary benefits, that we can bring those out in a, as features are released every, you know, quarter, or however we can figure out how to do the engineering. Right. Wow. So with this coming online, and I'm assuming we're going to see some things in 2013, or do you think it's going to move into 2014? Uh, you know, I, I, that's what we're working on right oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. And again, it depends on how we prioritize the launch and what we choose to do. Right. How, how big a chunk we want to try to digest. Is this the one main project, or what else does OCLC have going on? Are you juggling well, we, a couple we different do, things? We do lots of data ingest, obviously, yeah. Yeah. Uh, daily. Millions and millions of records a, a day. Wow. So it's really not a pipeline issue. Um, there's always other projects going on. And, you know, we could say the same thing about Family Search. They have right. lots of things going on. So, but I think we're both enthused about this. The management of both companies, all the way up to the top, uh, are, are really enthused. So we'll get something done, and I really do hope there's going to be something, you know, really exciting out there in 2013. Absolutely. I'm curious, just on a personal note, mm -hmm. how long have you been with them, and um, how did you end up coming to OCLC? I, I'm, this, I'm in my 15th year. I'll complete my 15th year as CEO uh, okay. in May. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to retire in June. Oh. Yeah. So 15 years, uh, it's time for a change. You're leaving a great mark, you know, well, having know this merger. That. The next person will come in and say, my heavens, why didn't he do all this <laughs> stuff? You know? So anyway, um, I, I'm, I'm a great believer in rotation of leadership. So yeah. it's time for somebody else to figure this out. Um, and, and I came there, I was running an information company in Colorado for years. Oh, okay. Uh, and somebody called me up and said, you don't want to look at the Rocky Mountains anymore. You want to move to Ohio, don't you? <laughs> and work for a library organization. I almost hung up the phone. But, yeah. But thank goodness I didn't. It's been a, just a wonderful, wonderful organization to work for. And, you know, you go to work and feel good every day. Absolutely. Because you're lowering the barrier to access to information and driving costs down for libraries, which is our public purpose as a 501c3. There's so much fear that libraries will go away in yes. the digital age. But that's really not the case, is it? It's just the delivery systems change and... Yeah. Well, you know, it's it, everything has, you know, everybody and all the agencies have to adapt. So, right. so the library's value within the, the academy, the, the academic setting is different and will continue to change. I, I, you know, I think the value there is, is sustainable, absolutely. It'll be different. I think public libraries are under huge pressure, budget pressures. Yeah. Let's close the branches. Everything's online. Well, everything isn't online. No. We're nowhere near that. Genealogists know that very well. Right. So I think we have to do a better job of messaging and re recalibrating the value proposition of the public library, of, of the corporate library in that case, of the national library, uh, and certainly the university libraries. So yes, that's. But people have been talking about that for years, uh, and. You know, it, it, I don't want to only have Google as my mechanism to find things. Thank you. Exactly. And that's not a exactly. slam. We have a great partnership with Google, but I don't want that as my only option. Right. We need that diversity of the flow I mean, that's a commercially driven enterprise. Thank you. So <laughs> exactly. How, how exactly do you get above the fold? Well, um, you know, so, so that's a business thing. Yeah, it's a and whole neither other Family avenue. Search nor OCLC is a business thing. Right. You know, we're, we're institutions that are interested in providing full and, and authentic access to information around the world. So I, I think it's a very, very logical and a very exciting relationship. It's, it's perfect. When I saw the press release across yeah. my desk, I went, yay! It's, you know, a happy yeah. dance because that is just, it, it just makes so much sense. If it you does. haven't checked out worldcat.org, you've got to do it to see what they're doing. Be sure and keep reading the Genealogy Gems News blog because we'll let you know as these, uh, the the coming together yes, indeed. comes together and launches. We'll be cer certainly be talking about that on the blog. And of course, if you enjoyed this channel, subscribe. It's underneath the video. Click subscribe and we've got more videos coming to you from Roots Tech and you'll get all those notified. Jay Jordan, thank you so much for thank visiting you, me Lisa, today. Thank you, Lisa, for having Appreciate this discussion it. with me.